Sean Castorino. I'm an author, but more importantly, I'm an entrepreneur. I wrote two books, The Greatest Entrepreneur in the World and The Eight Unbreakable Rules for Business Startup Success. So I kind of have a general idea of business and how to start businesses. I've started over 20 businesses and quite a few of them were successful. Some of them were some stinkers, but I learned a lot along the way. And I want to just go over 20 questions that you really need to ask yourself when you're starting a business. I'm going to read some of this because I really want to drill down. Normally we just send this out in a PDF and I decided that I'd really like to just teach it to you and, and, and kind of give you the passion that I have about some of these points. The first thing is, what are the services or products your business is going to deliver? I mean, I know it's a very simple question, but what is it? Sometimes it's way too broad, especially in this day and age. It seems like niche businesses are becoming so popular. Bombas, all they sell is socks. You know, Tom's with shoes. Uh, you know, you have these Casper mattresses, Third Love, bras. I mean, it, it's just ridiculous how very particular businesses are getting. Again, you need to define very clearly what is the product and service that you are going to offer. You need to know what it is and make sure you can deliver it. Make sure people actually want it. Again, what are the product and services you're going to deliver? Are you sure people have a need for it? And can you actually get it manufactured and can you deliver it? There are just three simple ways to look at that, but you need to answer those three questions. Second thing is, what is your experience and or expertise in this area? Okay, if you're making a product, okay, I don't care what it is, let's say you make glasses, okay, unique glasses, fun, cute coffee mugs, whatever it is, do you have an understanding of manufacturing? Have you ever sold anything like this? Do you understand how to mass sell? Do you have a marketing background? I mean, what is your expertise? Because if you don't have an expertise, you got to bring in an expertise. You got to partner with somebody. This is such an area of mistake that people make. They get excited about something and then they go start a business and they're missing very key expertise. So if you're going to start a business, again, you better have some expertise somewhere. If it's not you, you need to find it with someone else. All right, in the first point, we talked about having a product or service, and I said there needed to be a demand for it, but I want to drill down. Number three, what is proof that you have a demand for your product? I mean, not that you just asked your friends. Did you do some digital marketing? Have you done some surveying? Have you done some Google Analytics on it? The point is this, you're putting money out there. You better do some research that tells you that there is a demand for it. I had a service company, I've had quite a few of them, and what I've done is I'll mail out postcards in 5,000 increments to certain areas and I'll look at our state and I know the demographics of certain cities and I'll do a test in each one of those cities so I know where to open a location and where not to. And it, is, it's, it never surprises me that an area that I thought was gonna be so good was a stinker and I'm thinking, golly day, if I had to put a business there, purchased an office, you know, vans, vehicles, and all these different things, I would have lost a fortune. So again, I test to make sure there is a demand for what it is I'm selling. Number four, what is your competitive advantage? Let me say that again. What is your competitive advantage? Business is a sport. And you know, you can't always, you know, you can't always fight on equal fronting. Sometimes the guy's bigger, stronger. I was a former college wrestler, and I know there's a lot of ways to, to win. And it's not because you're always stronger. It isn't always because you're better. But you have to have some advantage. And it's the same thing in business. Can you do it faster than your competition? Can you deliver a better product? Everybody thinks they deliver a better product, so you really need to make sure you can. Can you beat them on price? Can you out-market them? This is something that I always believe that you know, for whatever reason that we can do, that we have the ability to communicate a message to our core, our ideal customer better than our competition, and we can do it more affordably. That's kind of our competitive advantage. You need to have something. You need to tilt the fight in your favor if you're gonna start a business. Hey, nine out of 10 businesses fail in the first decade. One out of two fail in the first one to two years. Hey, that's some pretty rough odds. So you need to fight the fight by having some advantages, okay? Don't think just because you're gonna open the business it's gonna work. Again, you need to have some competitive advantages. Business is very tough. It's hard to build a successful business. Number five, are you going to resign from your current position? 
Let me go over that. Are you going to quit a paying job that feeds your family to start something that one out of every two times fails? See, when you say it that way, it kind of hits you. I never quit a job to start a business. I believe 40 hours a week pays the bills, 20 hours a week will accomplish your dream and make you rich. So I always had something that paid the bills and built my businesses in the other time that I had. And that's why I always hired smart people to work within my companies. I knew I couldn't be there every day. This forced me to work on my business because I never worked in my business. So again, I am not a big proponent, unless you're in your 20s maybe, or you're in a unique situation. But I think when you say I do and you have kids, you have responsibility and you don't have the luxury of just rolling the dice and quitting a job. So again, I say keep your job. When your business can pay you 50% of what you're making, that's probably a good idea where you can possibly switch over and maybe go on a budget. But that's when you, you know there's real live money and I think you'll be a lot happier there. So I am not a huge proponent in quitting a paying job that offers benefits. If you're really ambitious, there's time on the weekend, you can work at night, you can make it happen. If you're a great employee, your employer may even allow you some flexibility. Maybe go to a four day work week, whatever the case may be. Number six, how long can you go in months and or years without a paycheck? So we're kind of drilling down on that quitting your whole job thing. You do not start a business when you have no money. I know that kind of sounds cool when you hear, you know, all, Mark Cuban, everybody say they did it when they were broke. Yeah, they were 22, living in an apartment, living on the floor of their friend's house. That is a unique situation. Not every startup do they live with their parents or are they in a garage. I mean, a lot of people start businesses in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. So again, barring an unusual situation where you need less than you know, what most people do to survive and that you don't have a car payment, a house payment, and all these things. But if you have those, you need to build cash reserves if you're going to start a business because it takes about six months, I have found, before I've ever really started putting money in my pocket. And there are times when it took longer than that. And this is why I'm a proponent of keeping your job because you don't have to take money quickly and you can build a staff with that money, hire great people with that money. Typically, I pay myself last and normally it's about two years after starting a business before I start taking money because I always kept my 40 hour a week job. Number seven, is it gonna be your full time job? We're drilling down again on this. Hey listen, you've got to figure out exactly what it's gonna take you to pay your bills. Some people they just again they, they, they quit their job or they haven't figured out their cash reserves. You've really got to look at this with some intelligence. Again, barring you're not that young person. And I'm a fanatic about the, fun, the money part of it because I've seen so many business owners start a business and you know, they eat up their home equity line. Uh, you know, they take loans on everything. They touch their kids' college funds. And then they come to me six months later and they're like, I don't know what to do. I've got no more money. Yeah, y y you lost. You have lost the game of business. So you really need to ask yourself, you know, can I make this a full-time job? Is there any way possible I can do this part-time? And again, three questions in, all based on the same subject matter because there's nothing sadder than sitting down with an entrepreneur who's getting ready to go broke or bankrupt. That's a, I, that is the least enjoyable thing. So again, really analyze, do you need to do this full-time? Look at what you're going to be responsible for. Can you delegate that? Can you hire people for half the money you cost? Whatever it is, again, I'm beating down. I know I'm beating a drum, as my wife would say. You're beating a drum. You should not always quit your job. See if there's any way you can do this thing part-time. And if you absolutely have to do it full-time, look at how much cash reserves that you have built up. I have kind of did four questions in one. All right. Number eight. Now that we've taken care of how you're going to be able to afford to start the business and I've done all my warnings. So if you go broke, hey, I warned you. All right. Do you have a business plan? Some people say I should have started with that. No, I don't think so because bottom line is if you don't have the money to start a business and you don't have a plan on how you're going to actually operate it, it's irrelevant. So we've taken care of that. But do you have a business plan? A plan that shows you how you are going to be effective in the marketplace. It should have marketing in it. It should have what is the team that you're going to need to execute. Who's providing the expertise? Do you have like a profit projection, which by the way is just a, a wish? 
I love when people say, well, we're going to be making such and such. I go, you have no idea when you're going to be making money. So again, but do you have a basic business plan? I've never had a business plan that was much longer than two legal pages. It is typically, what is the product or service I'm offering? Why do I think what is proven to me based on my research that customers want it? Based on my competition, where is my pricing going to be? Where is my profit going to be? What is my profit margin going to be? What expenses am I going to have? What is the team, the employees I'm going to need to put around me? What is my marketing? How am I going to make an impression, an indentation in the marketplace? I've seen a lot of books on, on business plan. Everybody has a formula that works, but you better have a business plan that you can follow for the first six months to two years that allows you to execute an effective launch and importantly, operation of your business. All righty, question number nine. Do you need to consider partnering with someone? I'm a big advocate of partnering, but only in three situations. Does somebody have expertise that you don't have? They basically understand the industry or what you're getting ready to get into much better than you do. It's hard to start a restaurant if you've never ever started a restaurant. It's hard to be in manufacturing if you've never manufactured something. So do they have an expertise or a skill? Number two, do they have time that you do not have? Can they give time to the business and allow you to keep doing maybe what you're doing? Maybe you'll stay in your existing job as we've talked about. Number three, do they have a resource that you do not have? Maybe that's money. Maybe it's a piece of property. Maybe it's a line of credit. But again, do you need to consider partnering with somebody before you start this business? Number 10, you're going to start seeing a pattern here. What is your personal income goal after year one? You notice I'm going back to how much money you're going to make again. It kind of goes back to why I like you to keep your job for a time being. Because whatever your income goal is after year one, you probably won't hit it. I know that sounds discouraging, and I'm a huge, positive, optimistic individual, but I, I've never hit mine after year one. I always took whatever I thought I was going to make because I got excited. After year one, I wanted to put it back into the company. But it's okay, and I, and I, I think you should set financial goals profit for the company, income for the company, and it needs to be ambitious. And I think you need to set some measurables so that you know a year later, if you're not hitting them, sometimes you really got to reconsider whether this was a good idea. Example, if you've set it, you quit your job and you set a goal to make $50,000 and at the end of year one, you're making 5,000. Well, something, something's not working. Okay. You set a goal for your company to have this level of profit after year one. It's not even close you got to reconsider your plan, you got to reconsider where you're at in the marketplace. So I'm a really big believer in setting some key measurables to look at after year one. And I'm talking about your personal income, maybe the profit of the company, maybe have you guarded a certain profit margin. If you thought the profit margin was going to be this and you find out after year one it's half of that, well guess what? You're making half as much money as you thought. So again, after you you know, after year one, you have to have some key indicators. Your personal income is the one I stress, the profit and the income of the company, profit margins, maybe some customer acquisitions, how many customers you think you brought on after the year. But after year one, you have to have some key measurables that you need to meet or really analyze what you're doing and whether this is going to be a success. Number 11, do you have high energy? That's totally off the path, but Warren Buffett loves people with high energy. Listen, nothing is harder than starting a business. Again, I encourage you to possibly keep your job for a time being and working 20 to 30 hours additionally to build a business. That's a 70 hour work week. It takes high energy. Listen, nothing is harder. Nothing will be more demanding. If you want to start a business, I just can't see a low energy person doing it that well. For one, I think low energy people have a hard time hiring people. When I interview people, they have told me I, I, there was something about you. I just kind of knew it was going to be successful. You were so excited. I've had clients tell me that. I, I wasn't really sure what you knew, but you just gave the impression that you were going to get it done. Again, high energy is a quality. You really got to ask yourself, do you still have it? Can you display it? Because if you're going to start a business, you are darn sure going to need it. Number 12, I'm kind of going through personal qualities that I encourage you to have and to ask yourself, are you competitive? Listen, 
Business is a contact sport. It is competition. I want to beat my competitor in every area if possible. I know like a competitive advantage is kind of like one thing. I, I want to, honestly, I want to knock them out in a few areas. I want to have more customers than them. I want to bring in more money than them. I want to have more company vehicles than them. I want to have a nicer office than them. I want to have much better marketing than them. I want to have a bigger market share than them. I want more awards than them. I can keep going. The point is this. I'm a competitive person, and I do believe to be a successful business owner, you must be very competitive. Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, extraordinarily competitive people. So again, are you competitive? Number 13, do problems bring out the best in you? Do problems bring out your best thinking? I'm telling you, when you start a business, I, I, I always use the illustration, it's like flying a kite and it, it could come down in just a second with the wind. You, you're constantly solving problems because every day you kind of think something works and then you try it and you realize it doesn't work. It, starting a business is so fluid that if you're not a good problem solver, man, you're going to be in trouble. What I found is so many you know, new business owners are paralyzed when they have a problem. They can't make a decision and what happens is, is that they lose the confidence of the little bit of staff they have. Nobody wants to work for somebody who, thinks, who they think can't make a decision and they're afraid the company's going to go out of business. I encourage you when you have a problem, address it to your staff. Let them know you're aware of it. Let them know you're working on a plan. Maybe you need to involve them in it. Get other people involved in it. But what you don't want to do is have a problem paralyze you. So again, I'm going back to that question. Do problems bring out the best in you or do they cripple you? Does it bring out your best thinking? If you have a problem solving problems, good luck starting a business. Number 14, have you ever run a business before? Well, if you haven't, I encourage you to get mentored by somebody who has, who understands profit and loss, who understands staffing and leadership. You know, whatever, if you've never done something before, get somebody around you who has. I mean, if you want to go run a marathon, you might want to actually work out with somebody who's run a marathon. They'll tell you, well, you need to run the first amount of miles this way and then this way and this is how you want to train. Again, starting a business, 9 out of 10 fail. If you've never started a business, I would encourage you to get yourself around somebody who's built a successful business. You know what's funny? When you get around people who've done something successful, they like to talk about it. They like to tell you how they did it. So they'll probably mentor you for free. I had people that I went to lunch with once a month. I had people that I went to and asked advice, like, what is the best marketing? You know, what do you do when you deal with this problem? Again, have you ever started a business before? If you have, well, then great. You got a little bit of advice. You got a little bit of some of a track record. If you haven't, get somebody around you who has. Number 15, have you ever initiated the start of an organization? Okay, we just talked about have you ever operated a business? I'm going to ask you something even so simple. Have you ever started anything? I don't care. Have you ever started a neighborhood watch program? Did you ever start a softball team? I, you know, did you ever start a small group? Man, when you start a business, you've got to learn how to initiate and get people to follow you. You've got to, you know, you've got to be a catalyst, an initiator. If you've never started anything in your life, where other people join forces with you, before you start a business, I would encourage you to start something. See if you can lead. See if others will follow you. If you can't lead and others won't follow you, you will never build a business. Again, I'm bringing up things that you know some people may not bring up, but I encourage you to initiate something. Have something in your recesses of your mind that you know, I started this. You know, I, me personally, I started a softball team before. You know, I started a small camp before, you know, a sports camp. I started this before. I started smaller organizational type of things. So I knew that I could get something off the ground, even though it was very, very small, nothing lucrative, nothing like what I have going on now. But again, you need to have something that you've started to, I think, be a success. All right, number 16. Are you prepared to be the face or the point person of your company. This doesn't come easy to everybody. Not everybody is Bill Gates, not everybody is Steve Jobs, not everybody is good at just, you know, again, being the front of the company. 
if this is not you, you may need to work on this. You know, you can take classes on speech. You can take, you know, uh, they have, golly, they, what is that, Toastmasters and how you can improve your communication skills. I think small businesses, effective commercials typically come from their business owners sharing a compelling story. Not always in TV, but at least on radio, in a blog post, whatever the case may be, a video blog, whatever you do, you're going to need to be the face of the company. So you need to learn to be comfortable with that initially. I think forever. I think it's very hard to get out from under that unless you grew into a, you know, a billion dollar company and you pass it off to another CEO. But even like Bill Gates, he's been out of the helm of leading Microsoft for years, but that's the person that you know is the face of the company. Number 17, why are you starting the business in the first place? Listen, all of us want to get rich, but normally that's not the best reason to start a business because you typically get paid last as a business owner. But is the industry, are you passionate about the industry? Have you got an innovation that excites you? Do you want to build a team? Maybe like Tom's and Bombas Socks, maybe there's a philanthropic connection to it. Whatever the case may be, you really need to know why you're going to do this business. Because there's going to be times when you question yourself, you're going to go, what in the world did I get myself into? So please know your why, why you're going into the, why you're starting the business in the first place. If your business was perfect in every way, what would it look like five years from now? Would it be on the stock exchange? Would you be an industry leader? Would you be franchising it? Would you have partners? What would the revenue look like? Define it now, write it out, put it in a journal, read it about every three or four months. I read mine every week. But define now what success is gonna look like five years from now. That way you can build towards it. It's hard to hit something when you don't know what it looks like. So again, define success now. Write it down, get a clear picture of it. If your business was perfect in every way. Number 19, if this business does not succeed, what will you lose financially? Will you lose your kid's college fund? Will you lose your house? That may sound strong, but I'm telling you, I've met with people who have done some pretty dumb things on a business idea. Again, I'll give you another little piece of advice that has nothing to do with this lesson. Start your business with the least amount possible to get it breathing. Everybody thinks they have to have everything perfect in place. No, you just need to get it up and breathing to test the model. You can put money in as it grows, kind of like you know a child starts out as an infant and eats more as it grows. I believe you need to do that with a business oftentimes. So again, if the business failed, what would you lose? What do you have at stake? I'm not a big fan of putting your retirement at stake. I'm not a big believer in going all in in your 50s. I'm not a big believer in putting your kid's college fund at risk at all. There's a lot of ways to start a business. And I think you start with the least amount of money possible, with the least amount of risk as possible, and you have a plan B, you have an exit ramp. And why do I say this? Because nine out of 10 businesses fail. One out of every two fail very quickly. So I want you to be a, you know, very realistic about your odds. All right. If you're watching this video, though, you're trying to improve your odds. And if you watch anything that I've written or taught, I hope I can help you there. All right, number 20. Would you lose a relationship if it fails? Wow, man, now I'm really being a downer. Hey, some people only want to be around for the good ride. Some people are not built for failure. They're not built for a downturn. Sincerely, if it failed, would there be a dramatic loss, a friendship? You're partnering with somebody. You know, I'm not a big believer in partnering with friends. Again, in your 20s, that works. You'll always be buddies forever and you'll look back at it. But you need to be careful who you partner with, friends, family members, because if the business fails, it could be catastrophic. If you borrow money from friends and family and the business fails and you don't pay them back, you're going to have problems. I'm telling you, the next family reunion is going to be awkward. You are not going to be invited back in that social circuit when your friends start losing money. So again, ask yourself, if it failed, what would be the fallout? What relationships would be heavily damaged, not be the same, family, friends, again, maybe your living situation, you know, if it failed and you lost significant household income, somebody would not be very happy with you. Listen, none of these are questions people are excited to ask, but I put together questions that nobody asks. 
that I don't see in business plans and I don't read in a lot of books. I encourage you to go back over these. You can download the PDF and look at these even closer, but I wanted to articulate the 20 questions that I encourage you to ask before you start a business. These are questions you may have never thought of, but I sincerely want to help you. Sean Castorina, delivering the 20 questions every business owner should ask before starting a business.